Hey guys, what is going on? This is WrestleMania, back with another episode. Every form of entertainment has its fans, and then there's the people who cross the line from obsession to unacceptable behavior, and wrestling is no exception. Recently, we talked about wrestler Angelina Love's creeptastic confrontation with a stalker. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at eight times wrestlers were stalked. Number 1. Bret Hart In his memoir, Hitman, The Excellence of Execution details his terrible experience with a stalker who called herself Nasty Girl and lived up to her moniker. During Hart's time in WCW, he found himself stalked by a female fan who left messages after every Nitro for months, promising to fulfill his every sexual fantasy. According to the hitman, who modestly mentions Nasty Girl was among the usual number of women offering themselves up to me, he finally told her bluntly to leave him alone. Hart Stalker began traveling to meet him at live events and also made death threats, culminating in her arrest. Hart recalls the outrageous situation when he went to the police station to sign a statement. Sitting at airport police headquarters, I couldn't help but hear loud wails from the not-too-distant holding cell, followed by the thuds of Nasty Girl's powerful kicks. The officers around me kept shaking their heads in amazement at the sheer power and volume of her rage. An exasperated cop finally came out of the holding cell, slamming the door behind her. She told her fellow officers, If you want her wig off, you'll have to do it yourselves. Apparently, they needed to remove her wig to check whether she was carrying a concealed weapon in it. The cops then gathered in a circle and drew matchsticks to see who'd be the lucky one to take the wig off. Finally, the cop who lost burst out of Nasty Girl's cell, letting out his best war cry while shaking a long black mane above his head. I got it! I got it! I signed my statement. The policeman whom she'd attacked would ensure that she didn't bother me for a while. Regrettably, this hasn't been Hart's only experience with warped individuals, as you likely recall the 2019 WWE Hall of Fame ceremony where he was attacked by a so-called fan. Number 2. AJ Lee and Lita the following story shows just how dangerous a stalker can get, where a fan's obsession with AJ Lee, and also Lita according to some reports, nearly turned lethal. In 2015, things turned violent outside the WWE's Performance Center in Florida when a deputy fearing for his life shot a man who authorities say had been stalking a female wrestler, wounding him Monday outside a World Wrestling Entertainment training facility in Central Florida, authorities said. Orange County Sheriff Jerry Deming said the man had life-threatening injuries after the shooting and underwent surgery. The deputy had no choice but to shoot the man who he believed had a knife outside the WWE Performance Center. The man charged the deputy, who tried to retreat before firing his gun, he said. The sheriff didn't immediately identify the man. The alleged stalker was later identified as Armando Montevallo, who allegedly posted a video to YouTube of him spreading urine and fecal matter outside the center. The WWE issued the following statement. Unfortunately, a deranged individual with no WWE affiliation, who had a court order prohibiting him from being on WWE property, was involved in an incident with a sheriff's deputy in the parking lot of the WWE Performance Center. It appears the case against Montevallo didn't go anywhere, because while Montevallo was arrested and charged with assaulting a law enforcement officer, resisting arrest, and trespassing, he was twice found not competent to stand trial. One might think getting shot would deter someone from anything resembling stalking. However, that didn't stop Montevallo from making a spectacle of himself. In 2018, ClickOrlando.com reported, On Wednesday, Montevallo posted videos of himself to his Instagram account from outside Full Sail University's event center, where WWE was recording its NXT match. Montevallo's appearance was first reported by Ringside News. In one clip, Montevallo is seen howling at the crowds of people who gathered outside. My new wrestling name is Regeneration Flex, he says in another clip. In the video, he addresses what happened to him in 2015. Vince McMahon's people like to make things up, he said. Oh my god, he's waving a big thick chain on our property. Trespass him. Lock him up. The WWE later obtained a restraining order against Montevallo. Number 3. Maurice WWE superstar Maurice dealt with an obsessed man several years back, filing documents with the Los Angeles Superior Court that detailed her terrifying experiences. According to TMZ.com, Maurice filed a request for a permanent restraining order against 61-year-old Lee Silber, claiming he has sent numerous terrifying letters to my home and left more than 50 voicemails on my personal cell phone, all of which are extremely disturbing and delusional. 
In one of the letters Maurice claims she received from Silber, he promises to not only give you a check for $100,000, but give you a 100 carat diamond ring worth $20 million to prove I am your friend. Maurice says Silber's letters have gotten scarier over the last few weeks, with Silber promising that he will be coming to LA for me and will take me to heaven with him. Thankfully, the judge granted Maurice a three-year restraining order which required the stalker to stay 300 feet away from her. Number 4. Ric Flair In 1990, the Nature Boy found himself stalked by a fan who would plague him for several years. A woman named Deanne Seiden began to stalk Flair. Seiden spent the next eight years following him from city to city, getting kicked out of wrestling venues and eventually threatening his life. She claimed the two had an affair. In 1992, Deanne Seiden, the stalker, gave birth to a girl named Tiffany. She claimed the child was Flair's. Flair's problems worsened until 1999 when the stalker threatened not only Flair, but his second wife, Elizabeth. On January 3, Deanne Seiden phoned Flair and threatened to kill him and her own daughter if he didn't meet with her. She later phoned Elizabeth multiple times, voicing threats such as, You'll be sorry, you bitch, and You bitch, you're not going to get away with this. Over the next few months, Fleer and Elizabeth identified several of her calls coming from the McDonald's restaurants where she worked. After these calls and years of confrontations, Fleer finally had his lawyers pursue criminal warrants for Seiden's arrest. Flair's stalker fired back with allegations of her own. Seiden made the bizarre move to file a domestic violence complaint against Fleer. In the complaint, she said he had threatened to kidnap her if she didn't bring her daughter to visit from Houston and would tie me up, beat me up, and rearrange my face. She contacted Fleer and told him she would drop her suit if he dropped his. Instead, a judge issued an injunction preventing her from having any contact with the family. Incredibly, Flair's stalker did not stop harassing wrestlers. Number 5. Kurt Angle In a 2017 interview, Kurt Angle was asked if he had any stalkers, replying, I don't know of any stalkers, but sadly, that's not true. After stalking Ric Flair for years, Deanne Seiden began stalking Kurt Angle. Reportedly, Seiden did the same things she did with Flair by following Angle from town to town. This time, Seiden became more daring as she started making harassing phone calls to not only Kurt Angle, but to his then-wife Karen. She allegedly threatened to kill Karen, who was pregnant at the time, and threatened their other children as well. Deanne Seiden was arrested yet again for stalking and harassment. In an ironic twist of fate, Kurt Angle would admit that he did have an affair with Seiden that led to the stalking. Karen and Kurt would eventually divorce in 2008. While this is speculation, WrestleMania can't help but wonder if there's any truth to Seiden's claim that she was once romantically involved with Flair, just as she was with Angle. Number 6. Mickey James Another story deals with a wrestling personality caught up in a crazed creep's pursuit of a WWE superstar. In 2009, Jim Ross blogged about a bizarre incident involving a fan reaching out to him about Mickey James. Ross wrote, Some apparent whack job is emailing me to death, perhaps there are more than one, and is obsessed with me hooking him, I think it's a him, up with Mickey James. This isn't eHarmony, pal, but a place to congregate and order barbecue products, etc. This person can't figure out why Mickey hasn't responded to his or her many, many attempts at reaching her. Duh, did you ever think that maybe you've scared the hell out of her? As Larry the Cable Guy might say, let it go. In Ross's case, he was a secondary victim of stalking by someone who was stalking Mickey James, just another example of the lengths some stalkers go to. Number 7. Gary Michael Capetta Nicknamed the most dangerous announcer in the world by wrestling manager extraordinaire Jim Cornette, Gary Michael Capetta was a familiar face for fans, serving as a ringside announcer for various promotions such as the WWF, AWA, WCW, and Ring of Honor from the 70s into the 21st century. A key figure in Capetta's rise to fame appears to have been one Esther Novelek, who formed a fan club for Capetta and reportedly worked tirelessly to help him find success. Tragically, it appears Novelek was obsessed with Capetta, and it was years before the ring announcer discovered that female members of Gary's fan club started receiving bizarre yet threatening phone calls from an unidentified woman. Gary Michael Capetta also discovered that Esther was claiming that Capetta and her were engaged to be married. Realizing that the president of his fan club had become a dangerous stalker, Capetta distanced himself from Esther and her fan club. Soon, Esther began showing up to his wrestling events dressed in all black as if she was a widow. One night after a show, Capetta found a bonfire on his front lawn. It was all his pictures, newsletters, and other items from Esther's fan club. 
Ultimately, Esther was found dead in her home of lead poisoning from continuously poking herself with pencils. A shrine of Gary Michael Capetta was discovered in a corner of the room where she was found dead. Number 8. The WWE In one of the oddest instances of stalking, a person involved with the WWE ended up stalking the company itself. You may recall a Tough Enough contestant named Lisa who participated in Season 3 of the WWE series but bowed out because she didn't feel wrestling was the right fit for her. However, according to several sources, the real reason was that Lisa was removed from the show because she had a psychotic breakdown where she was smashing herself into the walls of the house. She also broke into the hidden MTV control room and worked her way onto the roof. She was talked down by producers and committed to a hospital for psychiatric treatment. Her parents would fly out to pick her up, but she attacked them and claimed not to know them. Sadly, things didn't end there as Lisa allegedly was able to slip past WWE security in California. It's unclear whether this occurred at one or more shows, and hung out with wrestlers after the show having convinced them she was with WWE as a tough enough alumnus, got backstage at a house show in San Jose, was able to have a chat with Vince McMahon, assisted in operating the pyrotechnics for ring entrances. However, while the cases we've mentioned clearly belong in the stalking category, some wrestlers such as Sasha Banks and Seth Rollins have set the bar lower. In a 2017 appearance on the Sam Roberts podcast, the boss said that, I grew up a wrestling fan, so I knew that I wanted to meet all my favorite wrestlers. But always in the back of my head, I never thought in my life to be like, hey, they're going to fly in. Maybe I should wait at the airport for like 12 hours at a gate. Hey, they don't want any sleep. Maybe I'll go find their hotel they're staying at and let me bother them. Like, to me, that's stalking. I don't tweet out what hotel I'm at. I don't tweet out what airline I'm flying. I do tweet what arena I'll be performing at, so I do expect fans at the arena. And I'm so happy to sign at the arena, that's fine because I'm telling you where I'm going to be at. If I see you in public, that's fine." Seth Rollins shared similar thoughts during an interview with the Chicago Tribune in 2015. I'm not mean to fans because I'm a bad guy. I'm mean to them because they're rude. If they stalk me at the airport at 4 in the morning, don't expect to get a picture, that's not okay. They can't hang outside my hotel or come to the gym and stare at me for half an hour and expect me to be like, cool, awesome. My favorite thing is to just run into fans coincidentally. Today, the national car rental guy recognized me and got so excited and wanted to take a picture. Awesome. It was a fan that happened to run into me. To me, there's a distinct difference. Don't get me wrong, our fan base is super passionate and I love them, but there's a difference between stalking me at the airport and just happening to see me. Not every wrestler agreed with Banks' definition of a stalker, however. In an appearance on the two-man power trip of wrestling, Shane Douglas went off on Banks. There's a real simple fix here, and I mean an incredibly simple fix. If you don't like being, and I'm using my fingers to make quotation marks, stalked by the fans, quit. Go be a waitress, go be a teacher, go be an attorney, go be a business owner, and go do whatever it is you want to do out of the limelight if that has become such a heavy burden for you. When you come into this business, you have to know up front that as you're coming in, all you can hope for is to have any kind of career. When you get blessed to have a really good career and be on top of that industry, then shut the fuck up and ride the ride. WWE Hall of Famer Bubba Ray Dudley was more civil when he tweeted about Banks' comments. Never worry about fans waiting at an airport at 5 a.m. asking for your autograph. Worry when they're not there at 5 a.m. asking for your autograph. Well guys, there you have it, 8 incredible stories where wrestlers were stalked. Be sure to leave your comments and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time for some more wrestling content.